Well, you have reached state, 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 state of the galaxies, galaxies, galaxies. See, it's echoing because the galaxy is so big. I did my own echo effect. It's almost as fancy as Settle It on the Screen's broadcast. Um, hello, everyone. Let's see who, who has decided to join the conversation. I see Star Critus. I see hello. Timo. <coughs> you guys have to forgive me. I'm sick. Uh, I see Data God. I see Bara. Uh, that's all I see. Oh, I think I see Don Atreides. Yep. I see that. Any, anyone else? Should I wait a minute before I get starting? A E I O U I E I U E. I think that's the most amazing name because it's 100% vowels. And it somehow still works as a word. I see Max, I see Decidius, I see the Galaga King, the King of Galaga, I see John, I don't see Telebro, ever, he's never seen, Mark Cohen is here in spirit, I see, uh, well I'll give it another minute or two. And then dive into it. I see that there's Skype. I see. That's a pretty cool little setup Timmel's got going on over there. <coughs> He's the only one in Skype, though. I guess nobody wants to talk to me. Um, yes, it's 7.02. I'll wait till 7.03. And then we will get, get it rolling. Um, but in the meanwhile, we discovered... It was a week ago that Rick Fox is a natural Galaga player. I watched him, we all watched him on the arcade machine, yep. over there, sit on the phone, having a full business conversation, totally distracted. And he put up like 561,000 points. He didn't even die. He wasn't even paying attention. <coughs> and he didn't even die. And then he had to leave. And so he just let his lives burn off. He just, just let them die. So that put us all in a state of shock. Because that just didn't make any sense to us. So just letting you know that that has taken place. Uh, let's see. All right, I guess we should get going into it. Rick Fox, the best Miss Pac-Man player, better. No, he's, I, he still hasn't beaten my high in Miss Pac-Man, but he's close. Um, all right, well, let's get into it, shall we? I was hoping there would be lots of people who would ask lots of questions, but maybe people don't have lots of questions. So let's go. All right. <coughs> So, Toon Galaxies, as you may have experienced, is a very large website with a lot of things that you can do in it, which means there's a lot of bugs and there's a lot of things that need to be finished properly and so forth and so on. So, what we're doing is we're going to be stopping adding new things and we're going to finish what we have and clear out all the bug reports and all the bugs and everything before we start to add more. So, the last few things that will be added <coughs> and finished is tweaks to the notification system to make sure it's notifying everybody properly. There's little bugs here and there. Uh, we recently added the ability to add your own Twitch channel so that it would come up on the front page. Well, there's like a bug where your stream may not be listed in the active streamers if your profile page hasn't been touched by somebody within a recent period of time. Anyway, um, there's normally more people streaming than it's actually listing, so we've got to fix that. 
Should have that f hopefully fixed by Sunday. The cancel feature has been implemented on our test site and there's just some little bugs, notification bugs with it. But <coughs> that will be, needs to be finished and that'll be moved over to main site. <coughs> Kernzy, what's up? <coughs> Everybody, excuse me. Um, so yeah, so once the cancel feature gets implemented, you will be able to cancel a submission. And the, based on all the feedback, the way that the cancel will work is when you hit cancel, the thread is blocked from any new voters. Everybody who has voted on that adjudication gets a notification that says, hey, this got canceled. And uh, the, the actual submission is moved into a cancel forum. So you can always look there and see what's been canceled. And then the adjudication will complete based on the time that has been remaining for that adjudication. So it'll complete as normal um, how, how it has been. So uh, effectively, um, it just gets rid of the need for a reject me thread. It just, a reject me thread doesn't need to exist at all. Um, and because uh, everybody, because all the reject me thread is, is a notification to everybody. So it notifies everybody, moves it over, stops it. Here's the big difference. When people post in the reject me thread, everybody dog piles onto that submission to try to get free uh, points, submission points. That'll end because once someone cancels, it's, it seals off any new voters. So there will no, no longer be uh, dogpiling and sort of artificial uh, submission point inflation. Um, I want my emails with the people who liked or thanked me back. Uh, if that has vanished, that has, that's a bug. We'll have to look into that. Um, it wasn't intentional probably relates to the notification system being fixed and stuff. You know, you move one thing over here, something over here stops working. So we will get to that. But that's like a bug. Those, this is what I'm talking about. It's like getting everything that's there just polished out and working really smooth instead of adding more. So then there's cancel. Uh, the wall stuff is also on our test site. Uh, it's, it's very cool. Um, it's essentially, the wall and the followers go together. So here's what happens when, when the new wall stuff comes in. Anybody that you follow, people, there's going to be a follow button. So you can build followers on Twin Galaxies for your profile page and, and for your feed. Anybody who follows you will get your wall update into their feed. And uh, there's certain controls you can uh, place around that. So that way, if you've got people, like there's people at Twin Galaxies who do arcade restoration and they have really interesting um, information about that. Maybe you really want to know every time they're doing that. Follow them. That way, when they do an update, it'll come up automatically into your newsfeed. Um, you want people to follow you if you're doing really interesting posts, because eventually what we're going to be able to move towards is if you've developed enough followers onto your feed, um, you know, you'll be able to uh, be recognized for your contribution that way, for, for your content contribution that way. And then that gets into the ability for you to potentially monetize your own knowledge and your own feed with the followers and because now you have subscribers basically and you're your own thing. And so everybody can have their own, you know, very specific thing that they want to talk about and then people can pick and choose what, what information they want to be getting into their, their feed. So the wall system and the follower system are kind of linked together. And 
uh, the Twitch. You'll notice when you, if you click one of the active streams on Twin Galaxies, it'll take you to the Twin Galaxies Twitch page, which has not only the Twitch stream of that person, but it has their profile picture, some of their stats, and their cover photo. Um, you'll also be able to follow there, so it'll like promote your Twin Galaxies following. If you're live streaming, people will know to follow you. Uh, so. <coughs> Let me look at the text chat. Um, once submissions are complete, the thread should be left open for further conversation. Are, are you talking about adjudicated submissions that have made it? We, we're not, if people want to have more conversation about stuff, uh, they should just start a new thread. The, the idea here is to have a sort of sealed permanent record of the event of an adjudication, not a continuous open record of it. Um, Decidious, when I restore my pinball machines, I better get, yeah, well, that's a perfect example where, see, everybody at Twin Galaxies actually really cares about gaming and, and stuff. So Facebook, not so much, right? Facebook is kind of everything. So if you go to a place that really everybody just cares about gaming, stuff like pinball machines, all this stuff that, that we are into and do, it becomes front and center and, and the main sort of currency of conversation, which is what Twin Galaxy should be. Uh, how will people know about your blog posts if they are not exposed somehow? I've been blogging, but nobody ever sees them. Well, right now, Data God, um, there's no notification system that's going on for your blogging. So uh, unless you are promoting it yourself to people, there's no easy way for them to know. Um, in the future with, with the, the wall stuff, two things will happen. A, anybody that you friended inside of Twin Galaxies will also become a follower and will become notified. <coughs> um, but uh, really the goal, the goal is, is for you, um, we want to add the ability to follow to all the little profile images and all that other stuff. And you have to build, I mean, like if you create content that people want to see, they're, they're going to follow and they're go, it's, it's no different than Twitter or even your Facebook page. Um, certainly, occasionally, th there, is, there is a page which we're debating what, that has sort of a cumulative, here are all the blog posts that have taken place today, but it goes against the idea of making everything at Twin Galaxies about a player, right? You're either at a player's profile, that's where you are, or you're at a player's submission, you know? The only sort of generic spot is kind of the forums, which is sort of this traditional thing, but the, the, I, I'm trying to remove all of these generic areas and really make the traffic centralized around players, what they're offering, what they're doing, what, what, what it's about. And, and that player's ability to to communicate. So, um, hope that helped. The uh, I love the opportunity to filter all the scores for a particular game across all platforms, so I could see all the Galaga scores and what platforms they are played on. Okay, now. Yes, that kind of filtering and searching would be great, but you're talking about a lot of records and a lot of cross right listing. And so you're talking a lot you're talking about a fair amount of computer horsepower to facilitate those searches. And so if you imagine you know a thousand people doing those kinds of searches and what that will do. I think the vision for that, because I know that that needs to exist, is gonna be some sort of premium style membership because the cost of doing that has to come from somewhere. So the idea of, you know, if we set up these super powerful, uh, you know, search filtering servers that can cut through the data and do all that and do all that, for the people who want to do that, because um, not everybody wants to do that, 
maybe if we create a way for them to pay for that to happen for them, great. So if it's whatever it is, if it's a dollar or two bucks. Um, but that's just a, a, a general challenge in terms, you know, we're not Wikipedia or Amazon where you have, you know, infinite money to just do these high powered searches and just pull everything up on a whim and have it all cached and, and indexed and there's a lot to it. So, um, yes, one of the things that I'm, I'm looking at adding though is the ability to type in at the, at, when, at the top of the search. Um, you know how it says enter your platform? I think we want to add one more strip, which is just enter a game name. So when you type in a game name, at least what it will do is it'll show all the platforms that that game is on. So you'll just get a platform list of what, like, so if I typed in, you know, Mario, instead of typing in Nintendo, right, into the platform, I just type in Mario. The idea is it would at least come up with all of the platforms that had Mario on it. And then from there, you could choose what platform for Mario you want to dive into. But the idea is then once you click that platform, it'll keep, remember that you typed Mario. And so if you clicked whatever, Game Boy, it'll pull up the Game Boy platform. It'll already pull up Mario. So uh, that's something that is on the list, <coughs> um, on the near-term list. Um, so, and also, you know, last thing on my list up here is bug fixing. Is there going to be another TG Entertainment Festival this fall? I don't know. Um, you know, the, the, very, the first one was an experiment. Um, you know, my, here's, here, here's, here's what happens. There's all this work to do for Twin Galaxies. And there's all this money that goes into doing these various things for Twin Galaxies. Now, back when the first TG Entertainment Festival took place, a separate group came to me and they said, look, we want to do some kind of festival. <coughs> uh, could we do like a TG one? I said, look, I'm not ready personally to oversee a festival and for it to be to do this thing. But if you guys are willing to pay for the you know the execution of that stuff or for and run it and deal with all that stuff then okay we can try that um i said at the very least what i can do is at least broadcast it make sure people can see it from a, a live perspective but i can only focus on that i can't is you know it's, 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 and so they they went and did whatever it is that they were going to do and that's why at the festival I was very focused on just the broadcast aspect of it because I wasn't part of the, the organizational or structure of, of whatever that other stuff was. I never really got to see the full festival because I was trapped on a couch like this. Um, so the idea of is one going to be coming this fall, it, again, from a prioritization standpoint, I'm trying to get all this other Twin Galaxy stuff done first. Now, there may be an opportunity where a partner comes in and says, hey, we want to try to do this. So I'm not outruling those kinds of things. I really thought that the, the decathlons we did were, was a very fun sort of competition. I, feel, I thought it broadcasted well, and I thought that, it, uh, that people had fun playing it. So, you know, at some point... Yes, there will be a much more formalized Twin Galaxies event that will be run by me properly, you know, comprehensively done. But I'm personally not ready to, to, to I, like, I only have so much headspace or money to do this thing. So we'll, we'll have to see. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's any questions other questions okay so aside from those features cancel and go all and followers we're going to be spending a bunch of time trying to fix all the bugs that are being reported and like scoreboard errors and uh, issues that people are having like there's just a lot of little stuff that needs to get fixed and it just takes time it's like something so small might take three days to fix just to find where the problem is. 
is that true for the Twin Galaxies Olympics idea also? I'm not sure if I understand the question, but I will say my, the, the grand vision that I have is a Twin Galaxies Olympics type event where you have a bunch of different... Um, to do a Twin Galaxies Olympic event, as I see it in my head, costs a few million dollars at least to do it the way that it should be done. You know, there's Counter-Strike over there. Over there you've got the, the League of Legends, you know, uh, regionals. Over there, oh, you're in the fighting community? Okay, over there is the, the Mortal Kombat and the, and the Street Fighter V. Okay, back here, over here, over here is Classic Arcade. Um, we're, we're, it's doing X, Y, and Z. Here's all of that is taking place. You have commerce. You've got um, companies there uh, supporting it. You know, it's like X Games. You know, big. You know, um, you know, Twitch and YouTube there covering it properly. Um, so. And that kind of a thing is, is a real possibility. It's not like it's like that's like some sort of fantasy that's absolutely impossible. Step by step, Twin Galaxies is slowly getting there. You know, you're, it, we're getting new users with new types of games. We're getting higher visibility. It just takes time and it, it, it costs a lot of money. And as you know, you know, Twin Galaxies isn't charging anybody anything. So it's a process of figuring out the best way of implementing it. But, but the ultimate goal is to really have an event that's just about the players, not necessarily about games, which is how most events are now. It's just like the game. So, <coughs> so anyway, bug fixing. So let me go move on. I got a question. When will you give us back the main IMPs? I hope you understand the irony of the one platform that had IMP video evidence for most scores was removed, and it's frustrating that it's not being able to show scores, how scores from the past were done, knowing that the IMPs are out there, but we don't have access to them. Okay. The IMPs that were at Twin Galaxies, okay, are, they were sitting on this Linux box. The data structure that associated the IMP with the score simply does not exist. So what we have is a bunch of INPs that are zipped up that are named numerically that have no corresponding anything. So in order to even know what an IMP, what IMP it is, what game it is, what score it's going to even have anything to do with to correspond, will require a tremendous amount of manual labor. <coughs> Unzipping the file, loading it up, looking at it, fast forwarding it to the end to see, whoa, it's this score. Whose score was that? It's not like there's anybody's name attached to it. Like there, there's a bunch of, so I'm sure at some point <coughs> in our lifetime, we will get to the brute force that it's going to take to do that. But there's such a long list of other more significant needs that it's just a, it's, it's just, that's just an issue. So, um, you know, it's like there, there, there's an overemphasis like, uh, you know, how, how about this? You know, like, like, here's a simple example. What do you want? You want uh, an IM, us to spend time on the IMP, or do you want, I don't know, the ability for Twin Galaxies to have two player accounts? Or, um, I mean, there's just this long list. So the data is not lost, it exists, but it costs time and money to sort that link it and bring it back into existence. So the, the pod is only so big, you know, but that's where that is. Um, 
Will there ever be an option to correct an ongoing track submission in new game marketplace as long as it's not fully funded? If you misspell words or a contributor points out a flaw in the rules, there's no way to correct this. Okay. The current logic for there not to be a way to correct it is this. Someone, if we allow editing, someone could create a track, get a bunch of people to sponsor it, then at the last minute, change everything about the track to be something that people don't want to sponsor, and then be the final sponsor to push it through. And so people then become, A, a founder of a track that they may not want to have anything to do with, um, and B, get ripped off. So the reason why there's no editing allowed is to prevent that kind of abuse. What happens when a track has some misspellings or something like that, and it gets and it gets through and it gets funded, we will go in as admin and fix the misspellings if the founders say, hey, this got misspelled, blah, blah, we can go in and, and fix it. And it's a, kind of a hassle, but it's better than the alternative of creating a scenario where people can be, can be led down the primrose path. So, um, well, Bar regarding the cancel feature for there, what we're going to do is put a lifespan on new tracks so that if they don't get created, if they don't get sponsored in, they eventually will just get deleted and fizzled out. <coughs> so you don't have to cancel them so that they just time out. Someone could recreate, you know, basically time out and refund everybody. Um, that was the idea. So, let's see. Oh, look. Uh, all I do, all you do lie, Jace, enough already, and you know it. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Because it's the sentence structure is not a sentence, but I'm just going to assume that I'm being called a liar. And since it's uh, the person saying this is called official Rudy J. Ferretti, um, then I will simply say, yes, according to Rudy J. Ferretti, I, all I do lie, Jace, enough. So I agree with you. I have now agreed. No disagreement. Okay. So what's next? The uh, next thing. <coughs> what does the leaderboards get up? When do the leaderboards get updated? My current PSIs. Oh, this is a Timmel question. Um, the leaderboards should be getting updated on a continuous basis. It takes days to cycle through the entire thing and recalculate everything, but it should constantly be grinding to move forward. If your PSI has not changed, um, this, is, this goes back into that, that bucket of bugs. There are bugs that have to be sorted out. Like the, the number one issue that happens with PSI and ESI in terms of the calculation is that as the service, what's the word, heuristics, right? It jumps from level to level. Um, sometimes while it's trying to calculate a variation that's nested deep, it'll stall. And then because it stalls and then it gets restarted, it like doesn't finish the variation thing, so, so it misses. So they, we have to go back in and restart it and have it go dig deep again. And it relates to the size of the, the database, and it, it, these are just bugs. And so we have to fix those bugs, that, which is why I want to shut down like new features and new adding new things until we really specifically get all of this stuff nailed perfectly. Um, so if it hasn't been updated or it has because there's, there's, there are new features that hit my mind all the time, simple ones. like. We should have like these weekly leaderboards that are updated that show like players, like just in general, who gained the most ESI this, mo this week? Just for this week, who just picked up the most ESI? Who picked up the most PSI? 
who gained the most credibility just for this week, right? And it resets at, after each week. So you can kind of see sort of the activity at that level since we're, we're looking at everything such a huge global level that things move slow. But if you zoom in and you start looking at that, um, I, I just think there's fun stuff there. So I want that added. There's all these things. But, but I think what we have to do is stop and really just finish out everything that's there, make it as tight and as quick as possible, and then proceed forward. So, that, so that's what's going on. Um, uh, let's move on. Twitch TV video links now convert and link to Twin Galaxies. When did this change and does it mean that Twitch TV videos are no longer allowed for submissions? Well, if it, I don't know when it changed uh, because it's definitely a bug. And um, it's, no, I mean, it's, we, we recently added a parser so that when you posted a Twitch link, it will pull it up and show it instead of just having just a hyperlink there. I think, I think what the issue was is there's two different kinds of Twitch links. We programmed for one and then the other one came up and it was only showing a link and we tried to fix that and I think it broke the other one. Because there's, there's highlight links and then there's archive links and they're different. Anyway, that's a bug, and that probably will be fixed by Sunday. There's a, there's a, there should be a fair amount of stuff fixed by Sunday. But, yeah, that's no indication of any change on Twitch or anything like that for submissions. Uh, oh, this was it again. Does the system only give you credit? Oh. <coughs> Track founders. Um... Anybody who participated in the sponsoring of a track should be listed as a track founder, and that should count towards them found funding, founding a track. So if that count is not currently representing those people, and it's only really showing the first founder, that's a bug that we will be fixing. Um, so that is a bug. If you have participated at any level in a track founding, you become a founder, and you should get a track founded credit for that. <coughs> that's how it was supposed to be. So if it's not that way, it's, that's a bug. How is the challenge system coming along? The challenge system is not coming along because of all these other bugs and all these things we have to finish. The The challenge system, like there's, there's two big systems that need to come online. The challenge system and the bounty system. Those are the, like the two big missing systems. And there's a third system that's being worked on, which is a tournament system, but Wes works on that. And then we'll have to figure out better and better integration between the tournament side and the Twin Galaxy side. But it's really the challenge system and the bounty systems are the, are the two things that we have to tackle once we get all this other stuff nailed down. Uh, the challenge system is always taking kind of a back seat because it's focused, the, the focus of it is important, but it, it does not it's, not, it's not particularly productive for the growth of Twin Galaxies. So yes, we need to go backward and filter and make sure everything is appropriate. But when you weigh time, money, and energy spent on creating a system that's designed to retroactively look at what's already there versus spending time and money creating systems that help bring more things into it, the, things that, the, the effort to bring more things into Twin Galaxies to help growth over, outweigh this other stuff. That's not to say this other stuff isn't important. It is. But it's not like the opportunity to fix that stuff goes away. Um, on the other hand, there are lots of opportunities Twin Galaxies can miss if it doesn't act or move quickly enough going forward. So there's always this, this balance, this challenge that goes on in, in the decision making of where do you 
where do you put your focus, you know? Um, but yes, the challenge system and the bounty system will be implemented. Those are guaranteed things to be coming. It's not really an if, it's just a when. So, <coughs> let's go. Oh, Guinness World Records. So, as some of you may remember last year, April, end of April, the, the, uh, is when they take a snapshot and sort of decide what records they're going to pull into their book. So they did that on April 21st. They took a snapshot and have been going through um, what, they're going, what records they're going to include in their book. So, and I know that their snapshot includes new records, new categories that have been added to Twin Galaxies. <coughs> um, so we'll see how that goes. And again, regarding Guinness World Record certificates, we don't control what they issue them for or not, but I do know that if, if what they have taken goes into their book, the likelihood of getting a Guinness certificate goes way, way up. <coughs> uh, the challenge system is more important than growth because people don't want to submit to a scoreboard that has bad scores. For instance, Shadow Dancer on the Genesis, what's the point of submitting because of that insane top score? Well, I can understand that um, having some scores on, having scores on the scoreboard that might not be good can, can be off-putting to someone, but it's, I, I can't agree that the challenge system is more important than growth. Twin Galaxies has to grow, otherwise it will die. You can, have, you can wind up having a challenge system and there's nothing, right? Like, there, it's, so it's, the, having a challenge system is important, and that's something that is going to come. But, you know, always keep in mind that by the time I showed up to Twin Galaxies, um, it, was, it was withering into nothingness and you know and there were people who wanted it to stay that way and the community is the community is far larger now than it was then right but it's only through the growth that more opportunities can can take place so it's like what would be like a like a really good example You just have to think of the growth as gasoline to move the car forward. Yes, you want to fix problems with your car, and it might, and the, some of the problems with your car might make your car have less value or be less resellable. But if you need that car to get you from point A to point B, the most important thing is that it can do that first, so that you can go earn the money to fix the the broken wheel or whatever it's causing the whiplash as you drive around. Um, it's, not, it's not really a, a whether or not challenge, score challenge system is important. It's just more of a priority uh, orientation. That's all. Um, somehow that score was incorrectly input under the old TG. My score was nowhere near that one that's on the site now. <coughs> Um, yeah, you know, look, look, at the end of the day, if you submit legitimate scores, they're going to go into the scoreboard. Maybe you can't get number one because number one is some cheated score. doesn't matter. Just you still can submit and sit at number two until eventually the challenge system comes online. And then that, that bogus score can be challenged and properly reviewed. And then it gets removed if, if, that's, if it really needs to be removed. It doesn't really, you know, so, so at best you're, there, there probably is a psychological aspect to, to it, but the practical aspect is that the challenge system will eventually exist and it will eventually start to move through and um, look at questionable scores. 
uh, stuff that's in the works. A lot of the stuff that's in the works just revolves around partnerships with companies uh, to help do cool things with Twin Galaxies and uh, bring opportunities to players. It's like once uh, Echo Fox started talking about using the scoreboards as a filter, essentially a draft system for H1Z1, well, everybody else started to look at that and go, oh, that's interesting. Huh. Maybe we should try doing something like that for our game. Maybe we should try doing that. So I'm getting these calls about how Twin Galaxies can you know, be a place that can cultivate players for different leagues and different games and different sorts of things, which is a good thing. It's like a, it's like a really good thing. The, you know, the idea of a mobile phone, uh, a, a mobile game developer wanting to put together a team, you know, it's very hard for them to, to screen out cheating and stuff like that on their own. Now all they have to do is, you know, hey, Twin Galaxies, let's set up a leaderboard um, and set up some incentives for players to want to maybe be on our team that we have for some promotional thing that we're doing. It's great. That's Look, man, that's people who play video games finding a way to a sponsor that's going to pay them to do it. I mean, that's a great thing, you know. Um, so there's just a lot of... <coughs> conversations like that that are taking place that will bring in more users it'll create more uh, recognition so if you are a Twin Galaxies ranked player in one way or another it just starts to carry a little more meaning in general to those in the game industry in general because now they know what it is and it's not so it's not they didn't have to watch King of Kong to know what Twin Galaxies is so you know, at this point, the biggest thing that slows down Twin Galaxies is, is just money, really. You know, if I had two, three million dollars to throw at Twin Galaxies right now, you'd watch it just go like this. It's at that point. So it's got to, you know, it's just got to do the slow and steady pace forward. And I want to clean up and tighten up all of the engineering around the site um, fix, fix all these little bugs, do user interface tweaks, stuff like that. Um, but it's all good. It's all good stuff. <coughs> um, imagine if there, if it was a Donkey Kong and there was 1.5 million score in the database, would Playbaby doing an article about Wes and Robbie when there was a higher score in the database? So no, there's, there's no way to know that. They'd probably, I would assume that they would do the article about whoever has the 1.5 million score, right? The way Steve Sanders got all those interviews for having 3.3 or 3.2 million, you know? So that's what happens if someone successfully lies and gets it into the database and then it's just in acts like it's legit and no one can prove otherwise yeah they're gonna you know what's his name uh lance armstrong there you go um so that's really most of the update i'm kind of low energy because i'm like fighting being ill and all of the 22 hour work day that i have how would Wes and Robbie feel about that? That's why I mean, it doesn't matter how they feel about it. How do all those uh, people who raced against Lance Armstrong feel about it? I'm sure they feel pretty shitty about it, right? Just like Wes and Robbie would feel shitty about it. But what you can't, what can you do? Um, you know, like it's like that's just what happens. But it's not an argument about whether or not we need a challenge system. I agree, we need a challenge system. But do we need a challenge system more, right? Do we need it more than something else? That's the issue. And there are things that are, that 
when, when you're looking at what benefits Twin Galaxies the most when you spend a resource against it, the challenge system is not the highest thing on the list that benefits Twin Galaxies the most. It's on the list, and it definitely will benefit Twin Galaxies, but there are other things ahead of it that are, like for instance, I can give you, like here's a perfect example. You know, what could be more important than a challenge system? I don't know. How about DDoS protection for the website? Okay? If I don't spend money, time, energy, and resources on that, there is no website. Because Twin Galaxies is under constant attack. Constant. So, do we just... That would be, that's a perfect example. We spend time and money on the challenge system. Website's just down. There's no money to engineering to fix that. There's no, there's no twin galaxy. So it, it's, it's always a, it's just this, it's a prioritization thing, right? And so, yes, the challenge system is important and it will come online. It has to. But I got to get these other things that are, um, in my view, more important to get done for the future of twin galaxies. Right? There's, I, I don't, like, there's not a business in the world that's going to care whether or not uh, a Sega score or something like that is right or wrong. And they're not going to do that. They, they are going to be more focused on whether or not, let's say, Twin Galaxies can provide certain analytic data about the players. Um, so that it can help them, you know, vet who's right for the sponsorship, right? Like, so, so do you spend time and money engineering ways so that a company like, I don't know, Burger King, who wants to sponsor a player, but they need to know certain things about players, you know, like, how do you, do you engineer that, knowing what that is? Or do you spend time working on the challenge system, which is not going to get anybody anything? Yeah, that 1.5 million guy gets the sponsorship. Yeah, he does. Just like Lance Armstrong did. Right? That, yeah. That's what happens. But then eventually, like Lance Armstrong, the truth will come out. You know? Um, again, I'm not saying it's not an issue. It's just there's like a lot of issues. Thug Johnson, dude, the loneliness on the couch is second only to the loneliness I have in my office. It's just double. Uh, actually, I like this because normally, man, I'm like constantly under attack by like people, in my, like just need, needing things answered, needing like the phone calls. This is like heavenly break right now uh <clears throat> let me see i think that's it look the sleepy mario I'm at the end i'm at the end of the informational thing although i prefer uh for people to ask questions live so i can answer them answer as many as i can um you know while you're here so if there are any Twin Galaxies questions whatsoever, just ask them now. <coughs> um, or I can just get off the airwaves and stop taking up your time. Let's see. When will the people who donated get their founders' photos or whatever on the web? You know what? That's a good question. That actually exists. It's already completed. We just haven't moved it over to the main site. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, uh, I, th I think it's just because it just got gets it gets forgotten. But thank you for that reminder. That's built. The founders page for the thing. It's built and done. It's just not on the site. Uh, we got to move it. It's on the test site. Uh, right to game fulfillment status. Well, according to NeoStorm. There's only like 20 packages left to send. And those are international, Neil? Uh, both. both? Both domestic. And other than that, the 1,200 packages that needed to go have all gone out. So 
It sounds like TG is hurting for money. TG has always been hurting for money since it was the day it was born. Is there anything that's not hurting for money? I'm hurting for money. Aren't you? Is there anybody who has enough money to do everything in the, that they want? I, I'm wondering. Um, but uh, Subarctica still needs delivery. Is st Guinness still planning on publishing TG scores in their upcoming book? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, April 21st. They basically uh, took a snapshot of everything, and they, they're working on the layout and picking what, what they're, going to, they're going to do. So, you know, that's, there, there's definitely that. Um, I'm excited because I'm sure they'll give us a, a big, uh, um, you know, layout. Five, you know, ten pages, something like that. But does anyone else? Yeah, the scoreboard was in hiatus for a few years. Yes. Um, and it was going to stay that way. Had I not shown up, I can tell you that right now. It would have been a, I, the, the, it, I don't talk about it. I don't talk about all of the things that are done or what it takes for Twin Galaxies to operate and work. But um, it requires, it required and does require a lot of work and money to do it, which is what's been going into it. Well, when, well, and when will I have time to stream some more Zookeeper? Pfft. My fantasy time. I, I am literally working seven days a week. There are no days off for me. None. So I wish I could stream some Zookeeper. Those are the good old days, man. Is Twin Galaxies going to get together with any other games like they have with H1Z1? The goal is for Twin Galaxies to be able to provide an opportunity for any game, for any game developer, any game um, uh, to, to help facilitate finding and filtering the best players in the world for whatever purpose that, that a sponsor or a developer needs. But you see, in order to do that, you've got to prove it. You've got to prove that you can do it. H1Z1 is one way Twin Galaxies can prove to the modern gaming community that its function in this gaming space is entirely unique because really when you think about it what Twin Galaxies is just doing what it does right there's a scoreboard and you can put scores up in H1Z1 but what, what, what people are realizing is it's a giant filter on a shit ton of cheaters out there who cheat their asses off in games like H1Z1 so it's impossible to know who's really good at the game because everybody cheats their stats off the chart. So if you're going to try to put together a team of good players, how are you supposed to do that? Are you supposed to go to Twitch and try to find H1Z1 players that you think are good or that have large followings? What you'll wind up with is uh, popular H1Z1 streamers. That doesn't mean those are the best players. But outside of something like Twin Galaxies, how are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to even find them? You could say, well, you could hold tournaments all around the country and then that's how the best players can show up. Well, that's true. Those would be the best players that were able to get to the tournaments. But it doesn't mean that you have the best players. You just have the ones that were able to get to the tournaments. Most of the gameplay in this world happens by people at home playing on the internet and they can be really good at things. Twin Galaxies offers this way for those people who don't like to stream all the time, who don't, aren't big personalities, to get a real chance at showing their skill, placing within a controlled environment and actually meeting an opportunity 
with a, a team or a sponsor to get paid to do what they do. So if we can show and prove and demonstrate with, with the Twin Galaxies leaderboards that we can put together a winning H1Z1 team, it will do wonders for Twin Galaxies and other games and other developers and other leagues that want to come together. Like, you know, they're, they're, everybody's doing this mad rush to, uh, hey, uh, uh, Brando, what's up? Everybody's doing this mad rush to get into esports. A lot of outside companies, they want to put together leagues, they want to do this stuff, but how, you know, like, what kind of league should they put together? Uh, you know, there could be a company that wants to put together an arcade play, like a league for arcade gameplay, a, a, an actual league. You know, sell advertising around it, because all these things are events, they're just events. They might as well be a music concert, it doesn't matter what it is. It's an event you sell tickets to, you wa people watch and be entertained. So is it outside of the idea for there to be an arcade league? No, of course not. Where would you find the best players for arcade? Right? You'd go straight to Twin Galaxies, and that's where you would start to try to recruit your teams. Who's good at Mario Brothers? Who's good at Donkey Kong? Pow. But you could do that for any game, in any genre, any platform. And so, it's a very healthy thing for the video game playing community, the Twin Galaxies community, for companies like Daybreak to, to, to utilize. I mean, you have to understand, if you don't play H1Z1, um, when you load H1Z1 now, right in their loader comes up the Echo Fox and Twin Galaxy stuff. Hey, here's an opportunity. Right in their game. The exposure is enormous <coughs> for Twin Galaxies. For people to come and just, you know, and so literally you have some of the best H1Z1 players showing up and submitting these scores. And now they're walking through the halls Twin Galaxies alongside other champions in Donkey Kong or Sonic or whatever in the same building. And they're, they're seeing each other's achievements. That's a good thing. Uh, I was going to ask, there are people who may want to set records on Steam games. Maybe they could try and make something for that. Yeah. Yep. The, once you realize that Twin Galaxies is this place that can filter and bubble up top players in any gaming category, if you create the right leaderboard, well, suddenly now you have a, an honest-to-God, legitimate draft system, drafting system. For Because right now, really, the people who get opportunities in, in these pro esports games, they're, they're, they're popular streamers. They're, they're, they're personalities. They're people who have... have other aspects to them other than the fact that they just have pure gaming skill. Using the Twin Galaxies mechanism, skill starts to become the most forefront aspect that people are looking for. One minute remaining. According to the system, I only have uh, 55 seconds left, so if there's any last questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, appreciate you going to Twin Galaxies and participating, and uh, hope to just, you know, step by step, continue to grow the, the platform and the community and, and just offer more there. So, I'm gonna try to, uh, to, to uh, rest, relax, and survive. Actually, even though my voice sounds like this, I have to go do voiceover. I just tried to submit scores since Sunday and I'm receiving an error about image verification. I've posted all my errors and details. We're going to fix it. Did I get, am I off? I'm still going? It's a bug. We're going to fix that. We know. So don't worry. Should have it fixed by Sunday. I'll see you guys. Thanks for watching.